We're here at the Institute for Policy Studies. The date is March 21st, 2014. This is part of the Lessons of the 60s uh, Oral History Project. Uh, we have a panel here today that's going to talk about the community uh, control effort at the uh, Morgan Community School in Adams Morgan here in DC in the 60s and the 70s. And our first uh, speaker who will lead it off and then others will be introduced as we go along. It's going to be uh, Edward G. Jackson Sr. who was uh, one of the people who was instrumental in this uh, effort. So uh, Mr. Jackson, go ahead and uh, take it away. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Mr. Edward Glenn Jackson, Sr. My wife is Mrs. Margaret Jackson. Three children, Edward Glenn Jackson, Jr., deceased Stephen Jackson and Denise Jackson. Uh, the community interns are Mrs. Ida Beasley and Mrs. Dorothy Art Artis. And uh, Mrs. Dorothy Spell was an outstanding teacher, and Mrs. John Broadus was the office secretary. The overcrowding of the Morgan Elementary School was focused during the 1970s and early 80s. Morgan Annex was used to relieve overcrowding of the Morgan School children located at California Street Northwest. Alternatives were used in busing students to Sitwell Friends, a private uh, school, and to um, Francis Scott Key and Hardy School. Ms. Vera Stevens, um, due to the overcrowded condition, um, uh, one of the um, parents of Ms. Vera Stevens made an appeal to the D.C. Board of Education about the deplorable condition of overcrowdedness at the Morgan Elementary School. And as a result of that, um, there was a lot of um, concern about how we could improve the educational quality and the training of our children. Uh, Bishop Marie Reed um, and uh, myself, I was at the time uh, PTA president, and um, we fought to relieve the issue. Discussed on community control, Ms. Diana Jelson, head of the Adams Morgan um, organization. School committee made recommendations to DC Board of Education about community control. Elected as a result, they did allow us to form a community school in election of um, the um, members of the board. As a result of our efforts, um, Bishop Reed um, was elected to be the um, first um, chairman of the Morgan Community School Board. And um, I myself had been earlier uh, president of the PTA of the Morgan School. And uh, during the election, I was elected to be um, a parent representative on the board. And um, we fought to improve the condition of a school due to overcrowded uh, conditions and the lack of the facilities um, short in many areas. And uh, principal, Mr. Kenneth Haskins, um, was very helpful in pointing out uh, the changes that needed to be made. And um, from this was derived the uh, idea of um, having a health uh, center at school. It was a child that took ill at the school, and so Mr. Haskin said, uh, bring the child to my office, and we use this as a health uh, clinic for the school. It was very innovative, and uh, it was really an inspiration. and. Um, it uh, presented um, quite a challenge to the community and encouragement. And um, as a result, these efforts were made to um, uh, improve the school condition. And due to the overcrowdedness of the condition, the children were bus. First, they went to the Morgan Annex to relieve the situation. And um, that did not work. So subsequently, after Ms. Stevens made an appeal to the board, um, children were bused to uh, three locations. And um, through um, our efforts, we were able to temporarily leave the situation, but um, that did not solve the problem. So as a result of this effort, um, the community became involved. The Adams Morgan Community Council came involved in helping to relieve the situation. And um, they came up with innovative ideas of how the situation could be improved. 
as results, we were able to get uh, quite a consideration of moving toward um, getting a new school at um, Morgan. And um, as we had the elected school board, um, Bishop Marie Lee Reed was um, nominated to be the first president of the Morgan Community School Board. board. And um, she provided leadership and inspiration for us to move forward with the effort of improving the situations. And um, it proved to be very, very effective in um, increasing the quality of education for our children. And with the adding of the um, program of having community interns assist in the classroom made quite a difference in the whole structure of um, Morgan School and it was inspiration in having the local community involved and it provided inspiration for the children and as a result of this, it would change, the whole attitude was changed and it was more positive attitude, a, a positive feeling toward uh, improving the quality of education and uh, for our children. And um, it um, was quite uh, an effective ordeal and um, that was the beginning and um, subsequently with all the changes and the blessing of the children it, it was determined that we could no longer afford uh, could be dealing with the old Morgan school. We needed a new school for a concrete effort was made uh, with the support of the Adams Morgan Community Council to build a new uh, Morgan school and through their efforts and support it became a reality after many um, tough years and considerations and, and disappointments. And Bishop Reed, who had been the um, elected chairman of the um, Morgan Community School Board, um, was very effective and she worked diligently to see that these changes were made. And um, we won the way and um, one night when I came home from work, um, it was late, I received a call from uh, Bishop Marie Reed and um, she told me, Mr. Jackson, I'm worried about this situation and I don't see where we're going to be able to succeed uh, uh, with this whole project. But um, I assured her that uh, I said, Bishop, um, whatever I can do, I will provide my support in making this a reality and you can count on me. I say, I'll be right there until uh, the cows come home, so to speak, in seeing that that school was um, uh, built and uh, proven in the quality of education. Um, a week later, I received a call from Ms. Mary French and um, she um, told me, she said, um, Bishop um, Reed passed, you know, she passed on. And she had expressed to me frustrations of um, what we're going to do. She said, it looked like we're going to fail in this project. And I assured her, I said, I'm going to do everything and I'll be there till the very end to see that this program is carried out in a respectful way. So that was the deal. So we got the uh, board elected and uh, we was able to get the cooperation from the board to move forward on dealing with um, the community school and, um, and providing the education we wanted for our children. And uh, it was um, very difficult times in trying to hold to uh, the principle of um, keeping this uh, movement going and getting a new school. But we are forever grateful for the Adams Morgan Community Council of people like Ms. Diana Josephine and the school committee in providing leadership and support in seeing that this was effectively carried out. And um, people like Ms. Bed Ann Kane and Carol Swartz on the school board were instrumental in offering their support in providing and um, implementing and moving for the new school. And that was an encouraging um, opportunity. And um, from that, we moved forward. And the reality was um, felt when we eventually were able to get a new school built. And um, it had a, a, a big impact on the attitude of the children, the staff, the interns. The whole idea was very positive and results of where we are now. So we are grateful for all the help that we received from this community, Adams Morgan community, the Badger Neighborhood Council, and all of these people who made a special effort to see that our dream became a reality of um, providing a quality education for our children and for the community.
I'm Irene Elkin. I was Irene Wasco in the late 60s when all this project was taking place. Do you have a son named David Wasco? Wasco? Yes, I do. I went to school. <laughs> uh, I was chair of the schools committee of the Adams Morgan Community Council when we started our struggle to try to get what we called community control of the school, when we tried to get a community school established. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit. I come in a little bit after the beginning of, of what um, uh, Mr. Jackson uh, was describing. I come in in the early part of 1966. And it was at that time that Harrison Owen, who was executive director of the Adams Morgan Community Council, brought together a number of people in the community who were interested in the schools. Uh, that included a lot of the Morgan parents, uh, who, as uh, Mr. Jackson described, had a lot of problems, especially with overcrowding in the school. Uh, that also brought in some of the Adams parents and some of the new young white families who had moved into the neighborhood, like my husband and myself, who also had either preschool or school-age kids. And uh, so this was a bringing together of people who were black and white, people with different backgrounds, but all who had a common interest in trying to get the best possible education for all of the kids in the neighborhood. And since Harrison Owen is here today and has, and as I said, was really important in beginning this whole mobilization towards the community school, uh, and since he has to leave in a few minutes, I'm going to ask that uh, he say a few words before he has to leave about the context of what was happening in the community and especially uh, what was happening in the Adams Morgan Community Council at that time. In the early 60s, I came to the Adams Morgan area to be the Associate Rector of St. Margaret's Episcopal Church, which is across the way. And having come from out of the South where I was working with SNCC and SCLC and a variety of other folks and very shortly found myself in the midst of what was happening uh, in the local neighborhood. And uh, it, it turned out that uh, schools were happening, the Adams Morgan Community Council was happening, and the story that you've been hearing and going to hear more about the Morgan School I think was enormously exciting and useful. I think it's also important to understand that it didn't happen in a vacuum, that there were a whole mess of things going on uh, in the immediate neighborhood uh, well before that school ever started, um, which isn't to take anything away from the school. It's just to say that context is important. For example, uh, the Pilgrim Church over in the way was the home for the local Head Start program, which was uh, Bishop Marie Reed's uh, shining star, and uh, way before she ever got anywhere near involved with the uh, Adams Morgan School, or the Morgan School, uh, Marie Reed, Bishop Reed, as we all knew her, was out there making sure the kids got on the bus and they had something to eat and all the good things were happening. So there was that, there was a program that was going on uh, the summer before, somebody is kind of curious this happened in the 60s, walked in and said, we'd like to give you the Potomac School for the summer. And I said, thank you. And then they, somebody else walked in and said, here's uh, actually a significant amount of money. Do something good with it. And we were talking schools at that point. I don't remember how it all came together, but this marvelously innovative program teaching, if you will, core subjects, reading, writing, and arithmetic by means of the arts uh, was developed and evolved over the summer. So my point is that uh, there was an awful lot going on in the neighborhood around not just the Morgan School, that was important, but it was about education, education as a core uh, concern of the neighborhood, and there were a whole mess of people uh, that we were working on it. Um, the Morgan School, of course, was very much in the center of things. I remember it, and maybe this is where I have to leave, way before there was a community school. Uh, I remember the Morgan School mostly because during the day they had the kids locked in it, and then at night they had them locked out of it. And the uh, bottom line was the kids in Adams Morgan didn't have anywhere to go. 
And in the wintertime, it was cold, and, and they wanted to dance. Well, I paid a visit to the Board of Education and said that if they would open up school every Friday night, my wife and I would make sure that good things happened and nothing bad happened. So every night for, I forget, the whole year, uh, Ethlyn, that's my wife, and I would meet with what ran from anywhere from 100 to three or 400 uh, kids from the neighborhood. Um, we decided that they ought to have a, an entry fee, so that was 25 cents. It wasn't to make money, it was just to sort of say, well, you're here. And then we had a problem because then we started making money. And then the question was what to do with the money. And the kids came to me and said, well, you take it home. I said, I'm not taking it home. So I walked them across the street to the Riggs National Bank. See, education takes place in lots of ways. And there was five of us when we walked in. This is 1965. You can imagine when six very large black kids walk into the Riggs National Bank on Connecticut Avenue. And I was hiding behind them. I had a clerical collar on, so I didn't feel too bad. But in any event, we walked in. We said, hey, we had some money. We wanted to open an account. And the man behind the desk, who actually I knew, was a little upset. He said, well, you can't open an account until you are something. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, you can't just do it in general. You have to do it for an association. I said, well, we don't have one. He said, well, make one. So I turned to the kids and I said, okay, the Adams Morgan Teen Council has just been born. Now, we have about 20 minutes to write the charter and bylaws, which we did, came back, deposited the money. Well, anyhow, what I'm trying to say is there was a whole mess of stuff going on, and it was every different color of the rainbow involved, and there was kids of every age you can imagine. And out of that, in funny kinds of ways, um, the Morgan School Project emerged. Um, so i got to leave, and I know it's going to be a great story. Thank you. Okay, I would like to go back uh, f uh, for a minute to something that Mr. Jackson was talking about. He mentioned Vera Stevens, and she was a very important person in the beginning. The thing that got her most upset in terms of the conditions at Morgan was when they said that the first graders had to be on half days. In other words, they'd have half the kids in the morning and half the kids in the afternoon. And she said, oh, no. My kid's going to get a good education like every kid should get, and my kid's going to go to school in the first grade for a full day. And that's what started. She got together with Bishop Reed, Mr. Jackson, and a bunch of people, and they went down to talk to the, um, uh, I think she was the um, assistant superintendent for elementary yeah. schools, Dr. Johnson, Johnson, right. And that's sort of what happened before what I'm going to be talking about. So they got some relief there. They got some of the kids bust out of the neighborhood. And uh, they be, but they didn't get anywhere near what people wanted in terms of really getting a, a lot of good stuff at, uh, at Morgan School for the kids. So that's where we come in. Harrison brings together a lot of us. And out of those meetings, uh, we formed the Adams Morgan Community Council Schools Committee, and I was chair of that committee. Sonora Whitfield uh, was co-chair with me for a while. She had children at Adams. We held two public hearings in the spring of 1966. There were some education experts there, but mostly it was a lot of people from the community. Parents, especially Morgan parents, who were concerned mainly with overcrowding. And the other issue they talked about a lot was they felt often there wasn't enough respect paid to their kids in the school. We had a petition drive in the neighborhood asking that the D.C. school administration remove the Americanization school from Adams. There was an Americanization school in Adams School which took up 12 classrooms. And so that was one of the... Uh, requests. There was also the busing that Mr. Jackson asked about. They did do the busing. They still hadn't, by the next uh, year, removed the Americanization school. So we ended up with uh, the petition asking for both the removal of the Americanization school and the busing. We had more than 800 signatures. And in the process of people going door to door for signatures, we also got more input from the community about what people wanted in the schools. There followed a number of meetings of the schools committee members, 
uh, others in the neighborhood interested in schools, and that included some people from the Institute for Policy Studies, including Mark Raskin, who's sitting next to me. Uh, and it was from some of them, especially Mark and Sandy Jenks, Christopher Jenks, uh, from whom we got the idea of a tie-in with Antioch College. Antioch had a Master of Arts in Teaching program in D.C., which was one of the reasons we thought they might be interested, uh, because Morgan would be a place that their students could get experience teaching in an inner city elementary school. And Antioch agreed. They were interested in working with us uh, to bring about the creation of the school. We had more large committee, we had lots of meetings. We had more large committee meetings, we had smaller brainstorming sessions. Uh, and the basic question we were always asking was what changes do people want in the schools? A uh, few of us, there were I think four of us involved, Vera Stevens and Mary French and Sonora Whitfield and I, pulled together material from a lot of those meetings to. Uh, pull up together what we called a list of quote demands and I'm going to just run through them very quickly to just give you some idea of what people in the community were asking for. Could you say something about what you meant by Americanization? Oh what the Americanization school was? Yeah it was a school for people for immigrants who came and uh, to learn English and to uh, probably civics classes. My mother, when she came to the United States in 1920, had gone to an Americanization school in Milwaukee. And basically it was learning English and learning something about the history of the United States and so on. So it had nothing to do with elementary school education. And yet 12 classrooms were taken up by that. Thanks, Mark. So what, what was it that people wanted? They wanted smaller class sizes. That was top of the list. They wanted a library and sufficient books in each school. Adams did have a library. Uh, Morgan did not. I should say something about Adams and Morgan. The Adams-Morgan neighborhood is obviously named after those two schools. And I think it's important to know some of the history in that at, during segregated times, Adams was the white school and Morgan was the black school. And the two schools were incredibly different. Morgan uh, Adams had a wonderful brick structure. It did have a library. It did have a lunchroom. Morgan didn't have any of that. And that had continued over the years. And the Morgan building was really dilapidated. I think Bishop Reed told me that the building had actually been condemned, I think something like 1949, yes. so that uh, you know, it, things were, were, really, were really sad there, and there was a very good reason for people being upset. So we wanted a library, a lunchroom at Morgan, didn't have that either, um, teacher's aides from the community, tutoring, afternoon and evening community programs for teens and adults in the area. They wanted arts and physical education to be included as a regular part of the school program. Uh, and the final thing on the list was team teaching, which had, we, which had really been introduced to us by people from, uh, involved with Antioch. So that was the one thing in terms of innovations that the community was right into, feeling that it would probably be a good idea and we had been told about the success in other places. And also it was a good way that community interns from the neighborhood could be involved in, in these teams. Uh, we initially wrote a one-page proposal, and there's an interesting piece of paper that I'll put into the archives, which has that one piece, uh, that proposal on one side, and on the other side, it has in my handwriting the names and phone numbers of over 30 people, including both Jacksons, both uh, Ed and Margaret Jackson, uh, and a lot of the other people who ended up being involved uh, with our committee. So, and it has a lot of doodling of my own, but I think it can still go into the archives. Uh, finally, there was the drafting of a formal proposal. Some of the things that we, I just mentioned were incorporated into it, uh, but also some ideas about what Antioch might do uh, in terms of innovative approaches in teaching. Uh, so this proposal went back and forth between, Harrison Owen, by the way, was very involved in that. And the proposal went back and forth between Antioch and the Schools Committee. We presented a, a general meeting of the Adams Morgan Community Council. And what was always there, what was paramount, was the importance of the participation of the community. And that's when we first started really talking about, quote, community school. 
Uh, there were then uh, formal meetings on the proposal uh, among the chair of the Adams Morning Community Council, Diana Josephson, who Mr. Jackson mentioned, the academic vice president of Antioch, Morris Keaton, and the DC Schools superintendent, Carl Hansen. The superintendent agreed to support what we wanted to do, and he presented a memorandum of agreement to the DC Board of Education. There's some differences between our proposal and what that was, and if we have time at some point, I can say something about some of the inconsistencies and ambiguities in the various uh, proposals, because I think that ended up being important. But the agreement was basically for the operation by Antioch of a demonstration school an in-service training program for the Adams Morgan community, and the formation of a community school council, which we later called community school board, with which Antioch would collaborate on the demonstration project and related community education programs. I'm taking that verbatim from the agreement. Uh, there was to be a meeting of the DC Board of Education in May of 1967, at which they were going to take up this proposal. And prior to that meeting, we had another petition drive uh, in support of the agreement. And uh, we had over 650 signatures. And basically, we were again asking that they get the Americanization School out and that they agree to the proposal of the establishment of the, uh, what became the Morgan Community School. At the May board meeting, there was a presentation made, as, uh, in addition to uh, the 650 signatures, there was a presentation by the Adams Morgan Community Council Chair, uh, Diana Josephson, and the Vice Chair, uh, Bishop Marie Reed. Uh, there were a sizable number of people from the Adams Morgan community there. I've seen the estimates differ a little bit, but it was essentially about 100 people were at the meeting. The board unanimously supported the agreement, and I can say something a little bit later in terms of how we tried to get some of that board support. Uh, and it was going to be subject to some details, especially financial ones, that would be worked out at the June meeting. But basically, uh, the agreement was, there was the agreement at the May meeting. And some of us literally got up and were dancing in the aisles at the meeting of the Board of Education. Uh, and then there was the beginning of the implementation of the agreement, and I'm going to just um, say the two major things that had to happen at that point. One, Antioch had to appoint a director and some other staff for their part of the program, and the community had to choose a principal. And the com community group uh, selected a principal, Kenneth Haskins, whose background was actually in social work rather than education, but had worked in the New York area uh, working with communities and schools together. Uh, and um, he ended up, I can remember the meeting, it was in my living room with Ken, and uh, it was a unanimous decision. He walked out and we looked at each other and said, this is absolutely the man that we have to have as principal of the school. And I think we made a very good decision. He was not officially on board, however, until just before the beginning of the school year. So that's what I'd like to say in terms of up to that summer of 67. And you said some things about things that happened afterwards. I think we need to have some discussion about what happened that summer and the beginning of the following year. Yes. Uh, and I don't know if, I'm, I'm trying to think besides Mr. Jackson and Mark and myself, and I think uh, Mrs. Chappelle, you were already involved at that time, is that right? Later. Were there any other people who were involved at that time with us? Because if not, I can go on with mm -hmm. some of sure. it and just, just go back and forth between us. Yeah. I think something should be said yeah. what was going on worldwide in 1968. Well, there were some things going on very important actually in D.C. in 1968. Right. Uh, but and not, uh, that I'm saying have to do with the school. For the first time in 1968, the year after the community school came into being, for the first time, D.C. residents were actually able to vote for a D.C. Board of Education. Until that time, they had been 
appointed by the commissioners, who were appointed, I believe, by the president. And so some of us were also involved in that uh, campaign. Uh, but you wanted to say something more generally about what was happening, for instance, well, on the anti-war scene? or. or well, yeah, across the world, there was uh, an eruption of uh, an attempt to uh, find a new common good, as it were, uh, a new way of looking at the world. And this, uh, this turned out to uh, have an extraordinary effect in virtually every country in Europe uh, and in parts of Latin America as well. And so these matters uh, were such that the, uh, what happened here in our place, in our shtetl, as it were, was going on all over. And it was a momentous moment, both for uh, men and women, and certainly for women whose voices really for the first time were heard in new ways. My name is Ida Mae Beasley. I'm a longtime resident of Adams Morgan. Uh, I call I began working at Morgan School as an intern in the late 60s. I think that was a time of challenges, changes, and progress. I found the job working with the staff and the children very rewarding. I enjoyed so much my job. It was more like uh, I, in fact, I enjoyed working so much, I look forward to getting up every day going to work. Many activities and programs were put into place to enhance the learning experiences for the children as well as the staff. We all grew from that educational experience and exposure. I'm going to read this part to explain what happened after the struggles that everybody made in the community of Adams Morgan. It explains what happened from the struggles. Now the community is growing again and has become the focal point of a search for a better way for her children, her people. Long may she be successful in her aim to bring the joy of learning to all of us, parents, teachers, and most importantly, her children. So through the struggles that everybody who has expressed what happened during the 60s and 70s, it has been worthwhile, very worthwhile, because everybody gained from the experience. I know I did. I think everybody, all of us work, I don't know if he's got the camera right, but I think, yes, I think that all of us, excuse me, Mr. Jackson, we're going to go behind your head again. <laughs> I think that all of us working together, and I'll say more about the efforts to get to where we got to. I think all of us really enjoyed, Mr. Jackson and I have talked about this, really enjoyed working together. I think that was a piece of it, that we, it, it didn't matter just exactly where you lived, except that you lived in Adams Morgan, of course, right. uh, but that we really had a common spirit. And uh, it, it was one, I mean, to me, it's one of the highlights of my life, actually, is it, the working on the whole Morgan School project. First, I would like to say good afternoon to everyone. And that my name is Dorothy L. Artis. I live in the community. And what I want to say, I, first I want to thank Mr. Evie G. Jackson for introducing me to 
this program. And I am very happy because without him, my career, I would have never had this career. He, um, Mr. Edward Jackson, he was the one that told me about the community education program that they had uh, started at Morgan Community School. He asked me would I want, would be interested to become, uh, work as an intern. And I told him yes. I was very pleased when he asked me that. So I started, um, well, I was, uh, went to um, Mr. Alexander Brown. He interviewed me and um, he told me just to say a little bit about uh, why I want to work with the children. So I said to him, first you have to love children. And when I said love children, he said, you don't have to say any more. So I started in November the 13th, 1970, as an, edu um, as an intern at Morgan Community School. Well, it was two parts of the school. It was one, the main building, and then they had one at Morgan, I mean the uh, annex on uh, 17th and Euclid Street, Northwest. So that was where I worked. Later, we had the opportunity to uh, the board members, which was um, Josephine Butler and uh, Mary French uh, was the chairperson and vice chairman uh, Mr. Jackson. Well, they fixed where that the, we could uh, take classes to further our education. They had the, those teachers to come from University of District of Columbia, which is UDC. So I took uh, my cl took classes there on the campus at I mean at the school at Morgan Community School. Later, later, I went to um, I graduated. I worked as an intern at the school, and then later I got my degree, which I could give thanks to God and to um, Mr. Jackson. So I started, um, I graduated in 1994. I got my degree. I started teaching at Thompson Elementary School at, as, a, um, edu I mean, as a teacher. And uh, it was um, 1994. That's where I started my, further my uh, education. I got the opportunity to attend classes. And the classes uh, at the Morgan Community School, that's where I am so thankful when we first started taking these classes, we did not have to pay for them. They paid for those classes. And I was so happy about that. So today, I can say, thank you, Jesus. I did, got the opportunity to get my degree in edu elementary education. Uh, my name is Dorothy Chappelle, and uh, I later became a resident of the Adams Morgan community. And of course, during that time was when I went met Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. I had been in, I was in D.C., Washington D.C., but I was not in the Adams Morgan area. I also, before coming to Adams Morgan, I worked in other sections of the Washington of Washington D.C. And then, when uh, I think when the school really became involved, that's when I moved into the Adams Morgan A area, and I was a resident with uh, Mr. and uh, Ms. Jackson. Now, uh, so at that time, I became uh, I was interviewed. Yes. I went to have to think, it's got to think a little bit. Um, I was interviewed by Miss Lyons downtown as, as as she was a superintendent at the time. I was interviewed through her. 
and then later on okay so later on um, I became uh, part of the Morgan School uh, Morgan School staff and um, I think I was a member of the staff before I was not a part of the organization of Morgan School becoming a I wasn't here. I wasn't here during that time. I came in later, but I did become a member of the staff. I um, at the at the old at the Morgan at the Morgan School, and I think I had third grade or something along like that. However, I think Mrs. Beasley probably forgot that she was my intern. <laughs> I think she was my first intern. She worked. I don't know. I work with every so many people. But you work with me. Mm -hmm. She worked with me in third grade, which she was a very good, very good helper. And uh, and I enjoyed, of course, I enjoyed my experience there. Those were some beautiful, beautiful days. Um, then later on, uh, they start having the meetings, and that's when we got. That's when we started organizing for the community control and uh, of course that took quite a bit of discussion there. I was not a member of the, the board but I was a member of um, I wasn't a member, I was just I was just a, I was a staff member. That was the, that was the main thing that I was not that much. Um, Cause most of you I do not remember I came in. Found us, I was looking around to see who I did remember, but I don't remember. I, you said you were there. Yeah, I think we may have not overlapped. I think that you you started you after I was involved, particularly. Yes, I think. Cause I don't yeah, think you involved. were there. Yeah. You were not there I when there I the earlier time. started. Yeah. There. Right. But uh, I, I came into uh, the Adams Morgan organization. And uh, that, that during that time, that's when they started to have different meetings, and I was a part of that. And all. Oh. And uh, one of the, I can talk about one of the experiences, or one of the best things that happened to me while I was a teacher was I got my master's degree on the job training while working at Morgan School. And uh, I, I, that was, I think, yes, yes, I worked, I got, yes, I did, I received my master's there. Was I that for two of my children? <laughs> yes, and I had two, as a matter of fact, when speaking about the children, I had Mr. Jackson's three children. Mm -hmm. I had um, Eric and Michelle, my kids. Miss Beasley's. So who else did I have? I can't remember. But I had quite a quite a few children. I remember mm -hmm. all of that. And I I don't think I was involved too much in the music, which I am. A, yes, you were too. You were singing and playing the piano for programs. Yes, I took. You were active. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I have to give. I can't talk too much about what your organization was because I wasn't here. But I'm talking about my experience there because I came, I think when I came, I had been to two other schools. Um, my first school coming into the Washington, D.C. was Payne Elementary. And I worked there, and then from Payne Elementary, I stayed there half a year. The next half a year, I went to Eugene Meyer. And then from Eugene Meyer, uh, I came over to, I was asked to come to, to Grimpy Elementary. And when I left Grimpy, that's when I came into Morgan School. And of course, I stayed there until my retirement. But my experience was quite, I enjoyed my, I had a lot of experience. I loved the children. Many changes went on. So they were good changes. And, um, but as I said, the most happiest part that I had, the first one was when I got my master's degree. Uh, may I ask you a question? 
Was that masters through an the Antioch program? Antioch, or that a UCC? Right it was through the Antioch. It was program. Antioch. Okay, under that's Antioch. Why. I, I think it's important when we're going to be talking, when we're going to be talking about some of the problems uh, with the situation with Antioch, it's important to know that some really good things happened in terms of, for instance, of your being able to go on and get your master's. Right. And I think there were several others that got Mrs. Yes, I think, I think so. Mrs. Lamorier. I think Mrs. Lamorier got her high ever. She's deceased right now. She, had, she got her master's. Right. And I don't know who else. But there was Mr. Hunter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I know there were several of us. And that was what you call on the job training. Mm -hmm. And we went to school on Saturdays, we went to school on Sundays, mm -hmm. took classes, library and all. But uh, that was a good, it was all very good. Right. And as we just heard before, some of the interns were able to go ahead and get their bachelor's degrees. It, yes. So that there was. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. And, and I think both Ms. Artis and uh, Mrs. Beasley, I think one of the really uh, important things, I think one of the best things that we did in terms of our planning was to have community interns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was to have people yeah. from the community right. working directly in the school and not necessarily just doing the things that sometimes teachers' aides do, like, you know, just uh, sort of mop up after things, uh, but actually being able to be engaged in the teaching in the school. Uh, then later on, I think Mrs. Morris came in because I wasn't too, I, yeah, I wasn't too familiar with her at the time, but she did come in later so as a part of the Ms. staff. Miss um, Miss mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Miss mm -hmm. Artis, yeah, Miss Artis, I think. Yeah. She, did you work at Reed? I'm on the side. And more of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mrs. Broadus Mrs. wanted to talk about, yeah, talk about things that went on later. And then after that, I'd like to go back to some more of the actual organizing that we did and what we had to do out in the community in order to have the Morgan Community School come about. Good afternoon. My name is Joan Broadus, and I was a secretary for. Um, Morgan and Marie Reed School from November of 1970 until November of 2002. Uh, at my time at uh, working at Morgan Community School, I came there from Bancroft School where I was a clerk and I became a secretary at Morgan. When Adams and Morgan became the two combined community schools, they had a person by the name of Julian West who was their project coordinator. He had been my principal at, at Bancroft School. So when the secretary left Morgan School, he put me there to take the position as secretary. And that person was George Durrell, was the previous secretary. While my time at, at uh, Morgan School, I met a lot of people in the neighborhood, neighborhood and became very close to a lot of people. Mr. Jackson his, uh, was one of them. And Mr. Brown touched those two people outside the principal, which was John Anthony. Uh, as Ms. Breeze and Mrs. Uh, Alice were talking about the uh, education program that they went to uh, to get their degrees. At that time, the school was Federal City College, but the cl uh, the instructors used to come to Marie Reed School. I mean, I'm sorry, not Marie Reed, to Morgan School. And they were to get their AA degrees. But during the time, it was a program called the Father Through Program, in which control the money part of the program. So many of them were able to get their bachelor degrees. After uh, the new school was built, then that, uh, we went into the new school in 1977. And a lot of the interns went to other different schools, were transferred to other schools. Because when we went to the new school, the in interns became, the name is educational aides instead of interns, community interns which was, to me, the difference was that the interns were to get their degrees and be able to teach in the school. But the education aid was basically to help the teacher in the classroom. There were many programs within the school. At the old school, which was I call, which was Morgan, there was news that taught by a woman by the name of Sarah Day. Ms. Chappelle, I think, had, had a glee club at times in the school, and her daughter also taught dance. The physical ed teacher was Mr. Willie Demp. 
And um, I'm trying to minute. I can't think of who the um, physical ed teacher, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, science teacher was right now. I don't remember who that was, but the librarian at the time was Normandy Blackman. Normandy Blackman went over to the, to the new school, which was, became Marie Reed. Mr. Dempsey left him, I think, went to, uh, to another school. He went to Mott, I think it was. But once they got into the new school, they had several other programs. They had the GED program, they had upholstery, sewing, uh, music, and uh, there's another program, I can't, I think. Uh, then they also, in the new school, they became the, like a middle school. They had a seventh and eighth grade in the new school, which was Marie H. Reed. That lasted I'll do, about two years, and due to circumstances of, the, of, of money, the uh, seventh and eighth grades was removed from the, from the new school, so the school just became pre-K through six. But during my experience at the school, I, I got to know everybody in the school, outside the school, and my job was really like 24-7 mm -hmm. because I stayed late, I came early, and I went home late. And I didn't get no money, no overtime money. But it was a good experience for me because it helped me to learn. And I just want to say I want to thank the people I work with, Ms. Beasley, Ms. Artis, Mr. Jackson, Ms. Chappelle. I didn't get to know Ms. Jackson, Mrs. Jackson until later in the 70s. But through the experience of knowing these people, I want to thank them for being my friend and also helping me during the time I would need somebody while I worked at the school. Thank you very much. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, Antioch College and its relationship uh, to the community. When uh, Antioch was uh, chosen, uh, to come into the community, uh, there was really a conflict of interest uh, between the community and Antioch. And that conflict was that here the uh, children and parents uh, of the community expected the Antioch uh, uh, college kids who came in to be much more like teachers. Instead, uh, the Antioch kids uh, came in and they weren't dressed as teachers at all. They came in barefooted and here was uh, uh, children. Uh, Mini skirts. <laughs> yes. Here was children who were dressed to the nines, so to speak, and here comes these kids from, from Antioch College and dressed in mini skirts, as you point out. Uh, so there was this clash of cultures right away. Uh, there was also another thing which is very, a few other things which are very interesting. One was that um, the arts and science uh, was uh, uh, presented for, uh, for kids. So uh, kids had uh, a chance of uh, learning about fish. They could learn ab about this, uh, science. Uh, it was called Science for the People. Uh, and they learned uh, uh, music as well. And if you uh, ever listen to the radio or to television, uh, on uh, television, the arts program still is run by uh, the university uh, here in Columbia. In, in, in D.C. And you're able to hear the most extraordinary music at any time in, during the day or night. And, and that's a carryover from this period where uh, uh, 
UDC was very important in the life of art and in the life of the, uh, um, uh, as well uh, as science. Uh, this is during the time when uh, I think Mr. Anthony was here. We were still in the old building. And I don't know if some of you all were in the area or heard about it. Or the, Mr. Anthony chose me and my family to take you. took a picture. And our picture, a little story, was put in the paper in the Washington Post. I don't know how many of us remember, remember that. As a matter, oh, I could have brought it. I, I didn't think to bring it. I could have brought it. But all of my children were there, and, and including myself, we were chosen. But it was, I guess it was, it was okay. We got. Uh, if you want to uh, switch to me yet? We got a lot of, since you've brought that up, we got a lot of press uh, over the years, actually, both positive and negative, and I can say a little bit about that later. But what I'd like to do at this point is to go back to some of the organizing, because I guess that's part of the purpose of Lessons of the 60s. And so let me tell you some of the things we did that I thought was helpful in having this come can about. We, I'm sure, can we We've talked about a lot of the positives, and there were lots of positives, but there were also some real problems that had to be overcome. Uh, and so uh, let me just go back to some of the things we did. I have mentioned all of these meetings and hearings and brainstorming sessions and the petition drives and so on. Um, so let me uh, mention a few specifics about the organizing. One thing that happened towards the beginning when we started talking about community school and started using that terminology I had a conversation with my father-in-law, who was a high school history teacher in Baltimore, and he was one of the founders of the Baltimore Teachers Union. And he said, if you guys are going to be talking about community school, you better talk to my friend Bill Simons, who's head of the Washington Teachers Union, because you better have the union on your side. So I called Mr. Simons, and he liked the idea. He thought, he really liked the idea of community school, and he was supportive. And that came in handy later when there were questions raised about uh, the way, you know, the choice of the principal, Ken Haskins, uh, the community's role in the choice of the principal, in the choice of teachers, and so on. And he was with us all the way, and actually the Washington Teachers Union in general uh, ended up really being in favor of community schools. So I think that was really, uh, important. Uh, so finding out who your adversaries may be ahead of time and trying to make sure they're not adversaries. I know that at that time there were some groups uh, getting community schools going in New York and they ran into trouble with some of the unions. Uh, and he is quoted in one of the later uh, articles, and we had a, there was a lot of press on the Morgan School, and in one of the articles he was quoted as saying, I don't see any contradiction between a community school and the rights of teachers. They can go together. So that's one thing. Um, some of us also, and I can't remember who all was there. I think Bishop Reed was for sure, Diana Josephson. I think you might have been Mr. Jackson. Uh, and um, Vera Stevens was. We met with Jack Sessions, Dr. John Sessions, who was one of the board members who we thought, the Board of Education members, who we thought would be most receptive to the idea of a community school. Right. We had lunch with him. And he was very, very interested. And we were quite sure that he then transmitted that to some of the other uh, members of the board. And again, he came in handy later on when it came to our choice of a principal and so on. We checked with him because we'd been told that the board might be interfering. The, uh, that appointment was delayed a lot. And we thought the board might be. And I checked with him. And it wasn't the board. The board was, was fine with our, our choice of a principal. Uh, so that was another that was another sort of getting people on board, um, and so as I said, we had these later contacts with the two of them. Then some of the things about the petitions. I think the petition drives were very important. It got us talking to people at their doorsteps or sometimes inside their homes, 
And one of the things that was done that I haven't seen done in anything else I've been, I've been involved in was that there was role playing done for the petition drives. Eric Jones was a community organizer in the Adams Morgan area. And he one night at the Adams Morgan Community Council office led us in role playing. What do you say when you go up to somebody's doorstep and you ask them to sign this petition? Uh, what if they say such and such? You know, what's your response going to be? And I thought it was very, very helpful. It is something that I think maybe should be done more, actually, when people are trying to, uh, to do door-to-door -door work. Um, I had something else that I brought along, but I think it's a little bit beforehand. I made a, uh, I was asked, by the way, by a couple of the leaders in the Adams Morgan Community Council if I would, I was asked not to run for the board that first summer uh, because they felt that my husband's political reputation might somehow reflect badly on the school. And uh, so my participation sort of ebbed uh, at, at that point. I still talked to people and knew what was going on. And in January of that year, I made a statement to the board uh, about the relationship with Antioch and what had happened with it. Uh, but I was not as deeply involved because I wasn't part uh, of the board. I'm not sure whether they were correct or not, and sometimes I regret that I did not run for that first board. Uh, my son uh, went to Morgan in the third year of the Morgan School. He was in kindergarten there, and then at that point was when Adams uh, decided they wanted community control as well, and since we were in the Adams area, we switched him over. Uh, to Adams School. And I guess something I didn't say in the history in general was originally it was supposed to be Adams and Morgan yeah, that, that were in this whole thing. We asked that the boundaries between the Adams and Morgan school d districts uh, be gotten rid of and that it be one big area. Uh, and then the decision was made in those conferences with the superintendent and the Antioch vice president and our community council uh, chair, the decision was made to focus on Morgan. The afternoon and evening programs would be Adams and Morgan, and some of the Adams parents like Isaac and Ruth Long were involved all along, but the, uh, what was, the, was called a demonstration school that Morgan was going to run, uh, was it, the, uh, that Antioch was going to run, was going to be at Morgan, and if successful, it could then be uh, transmit, uh, you know, uh, whatever the word is I want. <laughs> it could then also go to Adams and maybe to other to other schools. Uh, but I I think that those are some of the points I wanted to make about things we did sort of behind the scenes and to try to up the possibility of our being able to get uh, the propose the proposal through. I should say, by the way, we talked about community control. That term was used in some, the proposal that we wrote. It was not in the proposal that the superintendent presented uh, to the board. And there was a lot of ambiguity about who had control over what. What was Antioch controlling and what was the community controlling and how were they, they were supposed to be collaborating. So I'm going to go on to some of the things that happened that were not so happy and what I think we can learn from them. I think, by the way, two of the most important things the community did was to hire Ken Haskins, who unfortunately left after two years to take a fellowship at Harvard, and to have community interns. And they don't have them anymore, by the way. I was over at the school the other day. They're teacher's aides. But there's a lot that we were trying to do that is being done still at the school. And I can, if people want, I can talk about that afterwards. But what I'd like to do um, first is to talk about what happened that summer after we got control, <laughs> after we got a community school, and what happened that fall. Uh, that summer, uh, Antioch did appoint a director uh, for the, uh, the Antioch part of the program, a project director. Uh, and he came out at the beginning of the summer. 
uh, as I had mentioned before, we chose a, a principal. He did not come on until the end of the summer, but did come. He was living in New York, came down sometimes to uh, on Antioch's payroll during the summer before he was appointed. That was a problem. And okay, yes, I was talking about the summer institute which Antioch was running, and which is supposed to train the teachers and the interns uh, to work in. Uh, team teaching setup where there were going to be ungraded classes like five to seven year olds, six to eight year olds, and so on. So, a lot of new things that Antioch was bringing in. Uh, and the Institute was meant to train them uh, in, well, to train them as to curriculum and how they were all going to work together and what have you. And that's what we were expecting. What happened was that I mentioned that a couple was brought in, I think from Michigan, uh, to run the institute. And I immediately, I was home a lot because I had just had a baby and uh, my second child. And uh, I kept hearing from people in the community about what was going on uh, in the institute. And people were very disappointed because what happened was that an awful lot of time was spent on sensitivity training with a lot of talk about race and racial attitudes and so on. Uh, there was some confrontation of some people. Uh, and this was, these were morning sessions, were these sessions. And in the afternoon, uh, there were sessions on, separate ones, on science and art and, I'm trying to think of the different social studies and language arts. Uh, and people were again with the social studies and language arts, I think those were the two that they were very disappointed in. The science and the math was done more by people who really had experience in the area. Uh, so that people felt they weren't getting prepared for what was going to happen the first day of school. They found out who the teams were only very shortly before school started. And we didn't have a principal on board until the school started. The school board wasn't elected until after the school started. That piece of it, I think, is OK. People felt people would be more involved once school started. But so that the community really had very, very little voice in what happened in that summer institute. And there was a lot of unhappiness. And along with everything else, what Mark mentioned before, in terms of the mini skirts and the sandals, they weren't completely barefoot, they had sandals on. And, uh, and the afros of, of some of the uh, African American uh, interns who were involved. Uh, so that there was a lot of tug back and forth in terms of the traditionalists and the non-traditionalists. That continued some during the school year, uh, but there also was the feeling that the Institute had not done what the Institute should have done. First of all, we had thought it was going to be a summer Institute, not three weeks. And the beginning of the school year was utter chaos. And there's no other way to describe it. It was described that way by many people. It was described that way in the press. I, I should say that the, there was a lot of press on the Morgan School. I've said that twice, I think, already, because there really was. Uh, Ken Haskins, in fact, pulled together a bibliography, and he, it was not just on Morgan, it was on community school also more generally, that there were 200 items, but there probably were close to 100 of those were on the Morgan School. And so the press at first was very favorable. Uh, there's a quote about saying this is going to be the greatest innovation in D.C. education in a decade. Uh, and then the press started saying, problems at Morgan. Uh, and there were problems. Kids were running around the halls. They were running in and out of school. People didn't know where they were supposed to be because there weren't self-contained classrooms. There were centers, and the way the teams were supposed to work was the kids were going to be in different centers uh, doing different things at the same time. That actually is true in the Morgan in the uh, Marie Reed Community Elementary School today, and it's working very well. It's well organized, and the kids seem free to move around. And uh, I was over there on Wednesday, and uh, there's some aspects we didn't know were going to be continued that actually were continued. But at that time, it was separate classrooms, so the kids were going between. Uh, the first day of school, parents didn't know where they were supposed to bring their kids. It was just really, really a mess. Uh, the godsend for us was Ken Haskins, who was just exactly what we needed. 
he immediately uh, said that it has to change, things had to change for the kindergartners, that they needed their own class with their own teacher and to feel some place where they would feel safe and secure. And so he made changes like that. He was always responsive to what the community wanted, but he also was very pragmatic about things and always very calm and open door for hearing from, uh, for everybody. Uh, and so Ken and also Hilda Mason, who I think had been brought on originally to work with the Antioch director, but became vice principal of the school and had a lot of experience in the schools. The two of them sort of brought order uh, out of chaos. And Ken's philosophy was partly that people, first of all, he really believed in community school. And he believed in some of the things that Antioch was trying to do in terms of new methods in education but he thought the teachers should be able to teach in a way that felt comfortable to them because otherwise er everybody was going crazy, the teachers and the kids. And so what he ended up doing essentially was teachers who felt more comfortable with a more traditional style of teaching could do that. And those who felt that they wanted to do more of the innovations could do that. And so there were different kinds of classrooms. And in fact, at, at the Marie Reed Learning, and it's called Marie Reed Community Learning Center. I think that's important. They're still keeping that. Even though there isn't a community board, there's a PTA. But they are keeping some of the things that, that were being done. Uh, at the, they have, the kids do move from center to center. And it seems to be working. I guess I may have said that before. It seems to be working very well. Um, I yeah, there's, Mark. Yeah, there's one point. I think, one point you might want to mention. Uh, Hilda uh, was married to. Uh, it was an integrated marriage, mm -hmm. and that was at that time. That was a very big deal to have an integrated marriage. Uh, he was uh, Charlie uh, had gone to uh, Harvard mm -hmm. as well, and so that. Uh, posed a very interesting sense of what the community was. Could be, yeah, could it be. was. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Okay. Thank yeah. you all for coming. Bye, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm Say hello to All right, rolling. Ready. Okay, well, with the flexibility that Ken Haskins brought to the school, uh, it was possible to get things on an even keel. <laughs> and we even started to get good press again. <laughs> the press followed us, so it was ups and downs. And there were ups and downs over the years. There was a spot three years later where a bunch of teachers left. There were some conflicts between the board and the teachers. Probably a lot of things that one could predict uh, would happen. Uh, I do want to say, before I go into the general lessons that I think we got from this, I do want to say that going over to the Marie Reed Community Learning Center the other day, I felt pretty good about it overall. And I was afraid I might not, because I knew there had been a lot of tensions, uh, especially in the first few years. Uh, but people looked very happy. <laughs> and the kids were freely moving from one area to another that they were working in. And although we don't have community interns, there was a teacher's aide in every classroom. And the teachers and the aides were sometimes working with a small group of kids. And there'd be other kids working individually and in small groups. And loads of posters all over. And one thing I should mention, because it does talk about community and response to the community, the demographics have changed radically. It is now 60% Latino, completely different. It had been 98% black. 60% uh, Latino, most of the rest black, uh, with some uh, about 3% whites and a few uh, Native Americans. Uh, so uh, what they are doing, though, I, I want to mention a couple things in terms of response to the community. They now have a counselor, a social worker, that they never had, a part-time psychologist, which they never had, and all three of those people are bilingual. So they are responding to the needs. Uh, there are two programs, and I can't go into it and don't even understand it all. There is a bilingual program, and there is an English-only program. But people get in by a lottery, and it's done within a few schools, and I can't give any uh, details on it. Uh, but in general, I got a very good feel. 
And a lot of the things, oh, and this is something I don't know, I can't go into detail on this, but I do want to mention that they have a lot of organizations in the city who are working with them in various ways. So I just will say something. There's a group called the Sitar Center, which is in the area, and they provide uh, music, drama, art, pottery, after school for the kids um, throughout the year, and different classes go at different times. Uh, Fillmore, uh, the kids are bused over there with DC buses once a week, and they get a chance for a half day, I think, for kindergarten to five, and the people from Fillmore come over for the preschoolers. There is a preschool, by the way, there's a daycare center also connected to the school, and they have... Um, uh, the kids there can take graphic design, drama, music, dance, and art. Uh, so that some of those things, they do have a full-time physical education teacher, which is one of the things that we were asking for. Uh, they have, I think, a part-time music teacher. But a lot of the stuff in the arts comes after school, but with these different groups, and sometimes during the school day, as with Fillmore. Uh, Georgetown students come over and tutor kids. Uh, Kirkland and Ellis, a law firm, has people coming over at noon to work with, on reading with the kids on a program called Everyone Wins. Uh, they say there's a self-regulation program in that the kids, when they choose what center they want to work in for part of the day, they have to write a plan for why they want to work there and why, uh, which is great, which helps them with writing skills too. Uh, and Westmoreland Church uh, has a Saturday school uh, and I guess it's for kids where the teachers and the parents decide that it would be a good idea, and they get uh, tutoring for a 10-week period during the summer. And the, uh, the lady who took me around, who's the business manager and also a parent, uh, said that uh, last year uh, it was a, a DC reward school. It was among the top five schools for rapid progress. So, that, so I felt pretty good about that. But I want to talk now about some of the lessons that I think, these are the ones that, that I find important coming out of this, and particularly coming out of the connection between the community and Antioch College. I think it's terribly important that a community be very careful when they're going to put faith in an institution that agrees to help them. They need to know more details, uh, they need to know more about what it means that the community and the college, in this case, will work together. Uh, the different forms of the proposal had different degrees of, as I said, the Adams Morgan proposal said control. That's not what came out of the eventual one. And the degree of collaboration was really kind of not clear. Uh, the community has to be clear what staff members are going to be involved and their relevant experience. Antioch sent us somebody who had no exper practical experience in elementary schools or I think anything, and he has written this himself in an article that he wrote called The Short Happy Life of the Morgan Community School. He was actually withdrawn by Antioch in that fall because of all the problems and nobody knows exactly who was instrumental in his removal, but he, he, was, he was withdrawn, and he was never replaced, by the way. They never sent another project director. Uh, he didn't have, a, he had a lot of theory. He knew a lot about experiments that had been done. He knew nothing, practically, about the running of an elementary school, which was why we were so lucky that we then had uh, Ken Haskins and Hilda Mason there. So not only who they are, but what their relevant experience is, and then the consistency in what is promised in different forms of, the, of agreement. Uh, and we need to understand the motivation of the institution and whether it is actually compatible with community goals. Community wanted a good school, <laughs> essentially. They wanted the community involved. They wanted a community to participate in things. They wanted the school to be responsive to the needs of the community, not only the kids, but also the teenagers and, and adults in terms of, of uh, afternoon and evening programs, for instance. Uh, and Antioch wanted to have a place for their interns to go, and I think they wanted to try out some new things. But too many things were tried out all at once, and that's my second learning, my lesson. 
There's a real problem when you try to do a lot of things at the same time. For instance, in instituting some degree of community control and also innovations in educational methods. So I want to quote from Ken Haskins because I think it, it, this was in one of the newspaper articles. There are two important areas here. One, the ability of the community to have control over its schools, and two, the introduction of educational innovation. To tie the two together, or to think one necessarily leads to the other, is the biggest mistake. What happened here is that innovation began before the community had control. Too many changes at once. And I think that's the big lesson. I have one more, one more thing which is related to that, that you need considerable time for planning for the introduction of new approaches and new methods, be they community involvement or be they educational innovation. Uh, and that was not done. There's a quote from Bishop Reed which surprised me and I've seen somebody else refer to it saying, Antioch wanted us to wait for a year but we didn't. It's really interesting to me because I was chair of the schools committee and I don't remember Antioch ever asking us that but they obviously did raise it with some people in the community council and I think that would have been a real good idea and to do the planning. One of the words that comes up in a lot of the early stuff is there are going to be pilot projects. So the innovation might be in a classroom or two classrooms, maybe some things for the whole school, but it was going to be piloted and evaluated. And that's another issue that I, I didn't mention here, which is one of the things that Antioch was supposed to do also was to get outside funding for evaluation of the program. There wasn't that first year, at least, any research done. There was no evaluation of what was going on. So lots of problems as well as you heard a lot about the bright spots, but there were lots and lots of problems. And I think a real lesson here, uh, especially in terms of community groups hooking up with other groups who are going to help them in some way. I think that's... I have you one know. final question. Sure. This is, this is a, a project of the lessons of the 60s. Do you think that the impetus for the um, coming together of the parents and, uh, and the community uh, 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 was inspired by the spirit of the 60s, or do you think it would have happened um, anyway? It's hard to say. I think it probably would have happened anyway because there was so much concern about the schools. I mean, Vera Stevens and company had already gone downtown to complain. Uh, they'd already gotten some kids bust. So there was something, and what Harrison talked about, there was something in general, there was something about this community that I think was unique in some ways, and it was a matter of black and white people working together. Uh, some of the articles say rich and poor. I don't think any of us was really rich, but certainly poor and middle class. Uh, and a real feeling of, well, you could feel it today, I think. A real feeling of community. And we want to do this for our kids, all of our kids. So I'm not sure. I mean, yes, yeah, some of us were activists. And I think some of us, in some places, I mean, there are only one or two places where I've seen it said, these white liberals came in and wanted to change things. And the people, the white families who were involved, the Raskins and us and, and uh, some of the others who were, and there weren't awfully many of us, but that were involved, we wanted to do it because we wanted a good education for our kids and we wanted a good education for all the kids in the neighborhood. And I think that was, that was the thing. So it's hard to say. You always have the broader context. Mm -hmm. And did we think things could get done? Yeah. But I'm quoted in one of the articles as saying, in ref uh, referencing the uh, superintendent, we never thought he'd give it to us. <laughs> and, you know, we did dance in the aisles at that Board of Education meeting. I can't tell you. And the reason, and I should say this, I was going to, and I don't think I ever said this exactly, the reason we thought we got a unanimous board, which was incredible, was that half of them probably, I would say about half of them probably, were impressed that Antioch was involved. And the other half of them thought the community, like Jack Sessions, thought that the community school was a good idea. 
And I think that's what made it happen. Was so, this unique? Were there any other schools in D.C. that got this or tried to get this? Not at that time. As I said, the original plan had been for Adams and Morgan for it to be the whole community, mm -hmm. and then it got focused on Morgan. Three years later, that's why I said my son switched to Adams. We were in Adams District. Mm -hmm. Three years later, Adams got community control. We had written into the proposal that if a Adams didn't want to go do it, first of all, they, they were involved in the afternoon and evening plans. The Longs, who I mentioned, for instance, Ruth and Isaac Long, and then he ended up being a chair of the Adams Community Council when I was involved with the school later. And um, uh, so where am I going with that? <laughs> he, um, Adams didn't want it. Adams was supposed to be able to get it a year after Morgan got it. Adams' parents didn't want it at that time. Uh, the, there, was a slight, there was some class difference between the two schools, which I think was part of that. They didn't want this. And then the Adams parents got upset because some of the uh, teachers were using physical punishment. And by the way, that's something that Ken Haskins completely outlawed. That was the one rule of the school, never to have physical punishment. And they decided, oh, yes, they wanted community control. And that was three years after Morgan started, and that's when my son uh, switched over uh, to Adams. Um, there, later on, the union actually endorsed the idea of community school, and I think there were some other communities that started doing this, but I don't have any of the details yeah, at all. What about uh, the, the children who were drawn out of Adams Morgan to the Oyster School, and that kind of rezoning it, overlay yeah, and now I understand that there is uh, Adams, yeah, Adams uh, oyster combination. Yeah. And again, I just heard about that recently, so I don't really know about it. Interestingly, I remember talking to some oyster parents early in this process, and they said, you'll never get it. You'll never be able to do it. And the oyster parents lived where? They lived uh, further towards Connecticut and, uh, you know. On the other side of Con Columbia Road. On the other side of Columbia Road, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, I, I could go into some detail with how my son was there for a little while, but we don't need to do that. Uh, but um, uh, but um, so that that but the Adams uh, Adams got its uh, community council, and Isaac Long was who was wonderful was uh, president of that, and I found my little award statement for parent participation. <laughs> Hi. So, uh, I, I, well, since I mentioned that, I should say that 10 years later, we had, well, first of all, the, oh, Mr. Jackson didn't really talk about the, the choosing of the site and Topper Carew and all of that. Um, that was after my active involvement. You know, we were trying to get a new school building, and it was going to come about, and the, um, the district, uh, the D.C. Schools Administration, uh, did, was deciding where it was going to be and what the design was going to be, and some people in the neighborhood said, and I'm sure they were energized by what we had done before, said, oh no, we're not going to let that happen. And um, one of the main people involved in that, and Mr. Jackson can tell you all kinds of stories about that, was Topper Carew, who ran the New Thing Art and Architecture Center. And his training was in architecture, he's now a filmmaker, but his training was in architecture. And he and some other people got together, and they, they had an architect from Howard University involved, and they said, nope, we can, we can uh, design the site differently. They were unhappy because what the D.C. people were proposing was to tear down housing for 49 families. And they said, no, we can do it some other way, because they were proposing a football field. <laughs> and Topper and company said, no, if we have a soccer field, which they have, if we have a soccer field and we do it this way, and I think one of the, uh, the businesses that had, there was a used car lot, that might have to go, but we can preserve the housing and let's have it this way. And they also, and, and got it, and got it. I mean, there was a real struggle again. And Mr. Jackson's the person who can tell you about that, not me, because I was not involved. I think my, my neighbor, Ray Firehawk, was on the committee with Topper. So. They not only got, but they also got the building 
designed in a way that could accommodate the kind of open classrooms that were talked about. So if you go over there now, you don't have a door at each classroom, so it was easy for me to peek into all these different classrooms uh, because they're around. The kids are work at different centers in, in the room, and there's a lot of mobility, which is probably very, very good for for little kids. Um, so the so that was this, that was another movement on top of ours uh, that was very successful. And you go to the building, you'll see it even has a swimming pool. Wow. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Okay, on behalf of this session, this evening, I, as the wife of uh, Edward Jackson, Sr., I just like to say there were many showers of blessings to the entire uh, committee, committee who has showed up today. We like to thank you for the history in the presentation. God did not want us to suffer with Morgan's Annex and Morgan School. The brick building on the hill of 17th Street in California. We say we smell the rain. The rain, the blessings, the community school under the leadership of Dr. Johnson. Yes, we shared burdens, but we persevere. We persevere with the leadership. Morgan and 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 had a healer, a healer. The Edward Jackson, the Dorothy Chappelle, the Dorothy Artist, the uh, what's the other name? Uh, out of obesity and um, Mrs. Brothers. Um, and of course, we will never, never, never leave out Bishop Marie Reed, who was elected chairman of the Morgan School Board. Principals, teachers, community insurance, interns, PTA, and the whole nine yards. We wish to thank you and friendship. We wish to thank you and peace, love, and prayers. Thank you, everybody. We love you. We love you. Thanks for coming. Irene, we will never forget you. We will never, never. John, we will never forget you. And all the people who are sending me here today. Thank you. We love you. And, what, and come on. Say what you want to say. Right. Yes, well, it's been a um, really um, wonderful experience, and uh, I want to thank um, all of you for coming out and sharing with us, and also my friend from Illinois here. She was here in Newport in action, and we worked together, and um, we knew a lot of good people who are no longer with us, but um, all these seeds were planted, and it, it was uh, quite an inspiration to see this develop. And, um, we did not have a big crowd, but we stuck together. Sometimes we'd meet, we'd have, if anybody had stayed away, a lot of things were not done. But when I call on the board during my chairmanship, everybody was there, regardless of circumstances. I mean, we had Sister Agnes there, who was a teacher representative. The different ones on the board went out of their way to, to deal with all these tough issues we had to do. There was a lot of sleepless nights and words and pressures, but we stuck it together. And the results we saw the school. That, that, that was one of the happy moments of my life. It was dedication of new school with the, all the inputs we got from so many dear people and neighbors and leaders in the community. And uh, I'm just thankful for all of them. And I have every opportunity I've gotten over the years, I've shared that appreciation and admiration for what they were able to do to make a difference. In, in the life of so many people, not only my immediate family, but all the friends and relatives and for Adams Morgan. It's like the Shannon Hill uh, tree on the hill, it's uh, certainly. So I want to thank all of you. And my friend was, well, I suppose, come all the way from Illinois here, but I remember those activist years. We met and we dealt with our issues, and they were tough, but we did. And uh, Bishop Reed was. Uh, I mean, we had a good relationship with each other, and um, 
I, I, up until the end of her life, she came to me just prior to her passing on that, to get my assurance that I would carry them out on. So I was determined that in spite of all other obstacles and difficulties that we would succeed in our mission, that was done. And we have the new school and it's still existing today. So thank all of you for your dedication and support and uh, listening to us and sharing with us our opportunities and our advantages that we have the greatest admiration for ever. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.